Hey Freaks, it's JJ and you asked for it. Today I'm going to be explaining the story behind uh, Flesh God Apocalypse's album, Labyrinth. If you don't know anything about Greek mythology and you want to know more about um, the story of Theseus and the Minotaur, um, I would suggest reading this book. This is what I did um, most of my research with. It's just kind of like an abridged version of all um, like Greek mythology without going into too much detail. just kind of plainly tells you what happens um, so you don't have to read like the whole Odyssey or stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to start off just giving you a quick summary of uh, the story of Theseus and the Minotaur. So Theseus is the son of Aegeus, who is the king of Athens at the time. Uh, he left his wife and son down in the southern part of Greece to grow up, and he left um, his sword and some shoes, buried them, and then put a big old giant boulder on top of him. Um, he said that once his son was big and strong enough to roll away the boulder and find the sword and shoes, he would be able to go seek his father in Athens. Um, so he leaves him down there, and uh, Theseus grows up big and strong, easily moves the rock out of the way to get the sword to get the sword and shoes, and then he decides to go seek his father in Athens, but he doesn't want to take the route by the sea because that would be way too easy for him. He's really obsessed with becoming a hero and wanting to earn, um, you know, his titles and everything like that. So he decides to take the more dangerous route through the land, and he goes and kills all of the brigands and bandits along along the way and kind of um, devils out his own form of justice to them. And so by the time he gets to Athens, all the people are like, oh, yay, Theseus, we love you because you killed all the people that we hated. And so uh, he shows his father the sword, and his father's like, oh, cool, my son. And then Theseus finds, uh, gets to Athens during time of kind of a crisis. It's a few days before this tribute is supposed to happen, where uh, the king of Crete, Minos, um, he is requiring that every nine years, Athens sends uh, seven maidens and seven youths to him um, in Crete so that he could feed them all to his minotaur that's trapped inside this labyrinth. And so uh, what happened was uh, Menos sent his son, Androgynous, or Androgynous, I think his name is, over to King Aegeus um, in Athens, and uh, King Aegeus was supposed to watch out for him and treat him like a good guest, but he ends up sending him on this perilous journey where um, Androgynous actually gets killed by a bull, and so then his father, Minos, was like super pissed about this, and he was like, all right, you sent, my, you sent my son into peril when you were supposed to be watching out for him. You broke this huge code of conduct when it comes to um, hosting a guest. And so he attacks Athens, and he holds them captive, and he says, either you're going to send me um, every nine years, seven youths and seven maidens for me to feed to my giant beast that I have in this labyrinth, or um, I'm just going to take over your city and I'm going to be king of Athens as well. And so um, King Aegeus is like, all right, fine, I'll do that. I'll send you these people to be sacrificed to your crazy bull in this labyrinth thing. And so um, Theseus arrives in Athens a few days before these tributes are supposed to be sent over to Crete. And he's like, hey, this is super not cool. I think I'm going to go follow these, sacri follow these tributes to Crete and try and defeat this Minotaur and then I'll be a hero and I'll come back all heroic and people will love me. So Theseus goes to Crete to uh, defeat the Minotaur. Once he gets to Crete, King Minos' daughter, Ariandi, falls madly in love with Theseus at first sight. She is dedicated to helping him find a way out of the labyrinth. And so what she does is she tracks down Daedalus, who was the architect who created the labyrinth. And so she like begs him for a clue as to how to help Theseus get out of the labyrinth once he gets in. Because once you go in, um, you're unable to get out. That's the whole point of the labyrinth is you can't get out, you get too lost. And so he gives her the hint that he should tie a thread to the door when he enters the labyrinth and then drag this thread um, or this string throughout the whole maze. Um, and then when he's done killing the beast, he can just follow that thread back. Um, to the way he came to find the door um, in which he came in. And so she's like, all right, cool. So she goes to Theseus and she's like, hey, if you decide to marry me, I will give you this hint on how to get out of the labyrinth. And he's like, all right, yeah, sure, I'll marry a princess. Why not? Um, and so so she gives him the hint and he does it. He ties the string to the door and he goes through the labyrinth. He kills the Minotaur with his bare hands. He's able to follow the thread back out of the labyrinth. He saves the tributes and it's a happy day for him. He pretty much just saved all these people and he's going to now be a hero once he gets back to Athens. And so he takes uh, Ariandi back with him on his ship. They stop on an island called Naxus, and the stories kind of differ from here. Either he left Ariandi on that island purposefully and snuck off while she was asleep, or he they stopped at that island because Ariandi was super seasick and she needed time to recover, and then he went back on his ship to do some repairs, and then a huge storm swept him out into the sea, and then once he came back to the island, he found her dead, and he was super upset about it. Um, those are kind of the two different options that they have, um, just because uh, writings differ from Greek mythology. 
Anyway, so that's what happens, and uh, when he gets back to Athens, he forgets to put up his white sails, meaning that he was victorious. He leaves up his black sails on accident. Black sails mean that he was defeated and that he's dead, and so the king, so King Aegeus sees the black sails on the horizon um, when his ship comes back, and he's so devastated, he throws himself off a cliff and dies. Um, when actually he was, he was successful, but he just forgot to put up the right sails. Anyway, um, that's the sh that's the quick and dirty version of Theseus in the Minotaur. Um, so now I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna get into the album and go track by track and kind of explain what each track means as it relates to the Greek mythology and um, kind of my opinions on what it means in general. Because there's a there's also a lot left up to interpretation as there is in most concept albums. So I'm gonna give you my opinion on that. So track one, Kingborn. This is just uh, Theseus's like origin story. This is where he is able to roll the boulder over and find the sword and shoes that are hidden underneath and he um, is excited to go find his father in Athens and he's just really obsessed with becoming a hero and um, you know finding glory and all that. Um, but it's also kind of contrasting the Minotaur. I kind of picture during this song like a few scenes shot of the Minotaur just kind of like sitting in his labyrinth all depressed and like kind of going crazy um, just waiting there in the darkness. So they're kind of perfect opposites and that's kind of shown throughout this album. You have Theseus which represents the light and then you have his exact opposite, this bastard um, monster that's born out of bestiality and a curse. And so I kind of just picture these two um, origins being explained in this uh, in this first song. Um, that brings us to our next song, Minotaur, uh, Poseidon's Wrath. So this is the origin story of the Minotaur, which I didn't mention before because I planned on mentioning now. And that is um, the Minotaur's origin story. So the uh, story goes that the king, uh, king Minos of Crete, was given a beautiful white bull by Poseidon. And Poseidon told him, hey, here's this bull, sacrifice it to me and I'll, you know, be happy with that. But King Minos was like, no, this bull's way too pretty, I like it, I'm just gonna keep it for myself. And so Poseidon was super pissed about this and he was like, all right, fine. This is what I'm gonna do. He, so he curses Minos' wife, um, Pasiphae, Pasiphae, that's how you say her name. He curses Minos' wife, Pasiphae, and makes her fall madly in love with this bull and just lust after it. So, um, a few months later, the she is born this child that is half uh, half human and half bull. Uh, Minos then has the greatest architect at the time, uh, Del Deldeus, and he has him construct this labyrinth in order to keep this minotaur um, inside without him being able to escape. And so this song is kind of told, I think, from the Minotaur's perspective, telling his origin stories about being locked in this labyrinth and just kind of being sitting there in the darkness going mad and being fed people every now and again. That brings us to track three, Elegy. And um, this is again told from the Minotaur's perspective. Um, Asterion is also another name for the Minotaur, by the way. And um, it's just about him going crazy, being locked in the darkness of the of this labyrinth and just going mad with hatred and shame of who he is and what he is and he just begs for the salvation of death he begs for someone to come along and put him out of his misery basically track four towards the sun this follows uh Deldeus, uh, the creator of the labyrinth and his son icarus so um some story says that minos trapped uh Deldeus in this tower um after he told um, Ariande, the secret on how to get out of the labyrinth. Some say he just locked him in that tower like immediately after he created the labyrinth just so that the secrets wouldn't get out about it. Um, so anyway, either way he's trapped in this tower with his son Icarus and one day he decides that they're going to escape and so he builds him and his son a pair of wings made out of feathers and wax and so he um, he flies out first and he tells his son to follow his path exactly not to fly too low to the sea or the sea foam will get the feathers wet and it'll weigh him down and he'll drown and not to fly too close to the sun otherwise um, the sun will melt the wax and then his wings will break up and he'll also fall into the sea and drown and so the song is about um, Icarus being kind of entranced by the sun and unable to resist the temptation of going into the sunlight and he flies too close to the sun and his wings fall apart and he drowns and dies um, and then Deldeus is super upset about this. He like uh, almost gives up, but then he ends up flying to Sicily and escaping anyway. Um, but yeah, I think the song just kind of represents uh, like finding your own way in life and whether or not to follow the path of your father or whether or not to risk making your own path in life. Track 5, War Pledge. So this is uh, Theseus's journey on his way to go kill the Minotaur. He uh, gets on this boat, super stoked to come back a hero and save all these tributes from a disgusting death. And he's excited to show Minos who's boss, basically. 
Um, track six, Pathfinder. Um, Theseus is um, accepts Ariandi's uh, suggestion of marriage if he help if she gives him the clue on how to get out of the labyrinth, and uh, so he enters the labyrinth and he's all looking for the Minotaur. When he has that string that's um, he has that thread that's attached to the door, um, and he kind of is going through the labyrinth with it threading behind him, so he's able to find his way back. Um, track seven, Fall of Asterion. Again, Asterion is another name for the Minotaur. Uh, Theseus finds the Minotaur and he kills him with his bare hands. So one interpretation is that he sees the Minotaur as like the personification of all his um, insecurities and all his inner demons, so to speak. And he destroys the Minotaur and thus destroys all his darkness um, and his like kind of dark opposite, if you will. Um, another option uh, as to the meaning of this song could be that the arrival of Theseus makes the Minotaur realize all the things that he is not, you know, all the things that he could have been but that were taken away from him and he just gets really mad and that anger kind of gives him a will to live whereas before he was just begging for death. And so he decides to, um, he decides to live and seek vengeance against those who have wronged him and locked him in this labyrinth and uh, he somehow kills Theseus and disguises himself as Theseus and is able to escape the labyrinth. Um, this is kind of hinted at at the music video, but I mean that music videos aren't always exactly the story from the song. Sometimes it's just like a, some other interpretation or it's meant to be more metaphorical sense. Um, but yeah, uh, so that, w I mean, if you're going with that second option, the fall of Asterion uh, means like the shedding of the skin of this like pitiful like minotaur that he like used to pity himself as. Now he is kind of taking his life into his own hands and becoming what he wants to be, whereas before he had no hope for that. Track uh, 8 slash 9, prologue, epilogue. So I believe this is kind of flashing forward a little bit to where um, Theseus comes back to Athens, where King Aegeus sees the black sails on the horizon, is super upset, and just kill throws himself off a cliff and kills himself. Another interpretation, which I feel like this song is more, seems to me more like a mother mourning the death of her son, um, which is also hinted at a little bit in the music video of Pathfinder. Um, so, I mean, it could be Theseus' mother mourning his death, and then she goes and kills herself. Um, something like that. I mean, you, you kind of take what you want of it, but that's just kind of my interpretation. Um, track number 10, Under Black Sails. Uh, so, Theseus is sailing back to Athens. He's super stoked about his victory in killing the Minotaur and saving all the tributes. Um, he's ready to claim his title. He's ready to become this hero. Um, he kind of, his goal in life is kind of to overshadow uh, Hercules, who is his cousin, who is like, you know, the most famous hero of all time. And um, he kind of realizes that Ariadne is um, a little bit weak, a little bit of a liability, and he just has no, no time for that, you know, and he's still upset at Minos a little bit, and so he decides to take that out on Ariadne, and he purposefully leaves her on the island of Naxos, and then he takes off without her. Yeah, and he's just afraid that she might kind of hold back his glory, hold back his accomplishments, and I think he's still also pretty pissed at uh, King Minos, and so this is him kind of extracting his revenge on King Minos by leaving his daughter stranded on this island and leaving without her. Um, yeah, and then, then we get to track 11, and that's just an instrumental track, and that just kind of ties up the whole album into one. And so yeah, that's the quick and dirty version of Labyrinth, and um, a lot of it is kind of my opinion on it, or just like different ideas of how you could interpret certain things. Again, art is subjective, so you can take many, many interpretations. I think there's also always going to be multiple layers when it comes to concept albums as far as like the song's meaning at face value, the song's meaning uh, within the story, and then also your personal meaning that you pull from it, which is always going to be different depending on who you are and what your life experiences are. But yeah, I, um, I love this album. It definitely has like this parallel between light and dark, you know, the Minotaur and Theseus, and kind of just highlights that like juxtaposition of um, lightness and darkness and which one you're going to embrace. And I think that, um, the album also is a lot about like finding yourself, uh, discovering who you are, going on journeys of self-discovery, and um, I think just maybe like realizing that all the like monsters or demons that you encounter in your life are more metaphorical in the sense that they are your own inner demons um, and monsters, and it's just like a manifestation of all of your fears and insecurities, um, how to overcome them, and like just kind of discover your true path in life. Thanks for watching, you guys. I also plan on doing Flesh God's album King, which is also a concept album. I will do that at some point here, probably fairly soonish. And if you want to get notified when I do that video, then please hit subscribe. 
Also, give me suggestions for which albums you want to hear me explain next. Um, there is one that I'm definitely planning on doing, which was a suggestion that I received a few weeks ago, and that's Karak Angren's Where Corpses Sink Forever. I listened to it for the first time, and I just fell in love. So I'm really excited to do that one. Again, if you want to get notified when I do that video, then hit subscribe, and thanks for watching, guys.